Investigative reporting is a journey with a lot of turns in it usually, and this was a pretty good reminder of how it happens. I was working with Alejandra, and given what was going on in the country, I thought I should work on domestic subjects. We started working on immigration detention, and uh, we were interested in deaths in custody that had taken place, seemingly in cases of medical neglect. I was first tasked to, with finding access to detention centers, sources there, um, and we were just looking through the entire process of private detention centers. We went out to California together to um, visit a, a detention facility in a place called Adelanto, California. And while we were walking around, we saw the medical area. And we went over and we were standing at the desk and I looked up on the wall and there was a sign, a big corporate sign that said, Correct Care Solutions Incorporated. And it was one of those you know, reporter moments like, what is that? Uh, the story is about problems that have arisen as privatization has kind of intersected with this public health crisis. As the story progressed, it became more of a data aggregation story. It became the amount, the sheer amount of lawsuits. It was just so much information and so many details to compile, and we sort of built that database from scratch. The biggest challenge that I encountered taking over that database was looking through the material and realizing how egregious so many of the stories were. We were looking for a couple of outstanding incidents of failure on behalf of the correctional health care systems and we found so so many stories that exemplified that that were just really compelling really emotionally wrenching and it was really difficult to first of all choose which ones we were going to use and second of all actually do the work of talking to these families who had had loved ones die in jail about what was essentially one of the worst things that's happened to them yeah we we talked a lot about what stories uh, we were looking for I mean, one is just the integrity of the story itself, its emotional um, impact, the way it, it, it illustrates a larger pattern. The stories can be complicated. Uh, these are not always heroes or angels who are telling these stories, but they, they have experiences that are important to all of us, and they reflect on our shared values and our, and our failures of governance. I found it such a good reminder that in journalism, there are so many people who have never told their story, uh, who have a story to tell. Um, I think it was a wonderful experience. For me, it was super enriching. It was a wonderful resource to have Steve there and see his whole process of coming up with an idea, going through the documents he needed to go through, having it go from topic to story, and it was just an ongoing mentorship. He was able to make connections in the material that we were finding that was really exciting and really helped me see how that kind of journalism happens and how it develops into the kind of piece that we ended up with in The New Yorker. We had a lot of fun working on this. They were really great and the idea that um, I have the privilege of being able to work with talented young graduates of the J School on subjects that really matter and that, that uh, Columbia makes that possible. Um, this was not a project that I could have done without their help. It was not a project that The New Yorker could ever have published without Columbia, the institution, supporting uh, this work and, and, and investing in it. So it was, um, it was really an example of how you know, the university can make a contribution to journalism that would otherwise not be possible.